Hey everyone, welcome back to the RP Games YouTube channel. My name is Ralph. This is Pathfinder Kingmaker. As usual, Lindsay is in the throne room bringing bad news. What's up with this girl? Always bad news. At least my Smilodon has the decency to sit next to me instead of on top of me this episode, which is uh, an improvement to previous episodes. Disaster! It's a disaster, your highness. What is it, Lindsay? The whole kingdom is on fire. Well, metaphorically speaking. Some of it literally. First of all, we've got armed gangs ranging along our border with Pateks. Robbing and killing people, destroying food stores and damaging any property they come across. Second, there are sudden and inexplicable monster attacks being reported all throughout your lands. And third, there are people out sowing dissent, with rumors and songs, even handing out pamphlets mocking your failure to fix things and encouraging the citizens to pledge fealty to Iravedi instead. Oh, here we go. Our governors are panicking. They've had to use all the funds we budgeted them from the treasury on preventing riots and mass hysteria. Several provinces have already refused to attempt gathering taxes from the people, claiming that just trying would be tantamount to suicide. We don't have much time. There may be no troops marching against us, but more of our regions are under attack each day. We may not have catapults firing on the walls of our capital, but there is no doubt we're under siege. There are no battlefronts and no battalions, but there are plenty of victims. We've been attacked, without reason and without declaration of war. We only have one option. <laughs> to kick Iravetti's ass. Yeah. I think I mentioned that like one or two episodes ago that that was gonna happen. Here we are. Show everyone in the River Kingdoms just who is the master around here. Well, it's Master Blackforge. That's right. Why am I just hearing about this now? Well, at first, no one thought these isolated events could be part of some conspiracy. Even now, it's likely few have figured it out. But these events have all developed too quickly and in what seems like a concerted effort. As though someone were pulling the strings from behind the curtain. There's more than enough evidence tying these strings to Pateks. So you think Eravetti is behind all this? Who else could it be? Bandit attacks are increasing along our border with Pateks and the boards spouting negative propaganda against you or singing the praises of Iravetti at the same time. Hell, he even invited you to the Rushlight Tournament for the sole purpose of mocking you. Who else would backstab their opponents in such a low, conniving way? It's just like him, that nasty, slimy, fat-headed prick. If he were here right now... <laughs> Go on, Lindsay, what would happen? Huh? Huh? <laughs> Do we have any definitive proof that would allow us to formally expose Erevetti? Not yet, but I'm sure the agents he hired will have something we can use. It's a good idea though, expose Erevetti, show the whole world the dirty game he's playing. Would definitely help us. When you deal with the spies, be sure to keep your eyes open. I thought the stolen lands were used to dealing with bandits. Thing is, they may be dressed like bandits, but they're behaving completely differently. Bandits wouldn't decimate the peasant population, burn their fields and poison their wells. Then there wouldn't be anyone to extort next time. Much more profitable to just shake them down every once in a while. That's why local talks tend to be well known. Nobody recognizes these new ones, and all that's left behind after their raids are corpses and scorched fields. It's gotten to the point that our bandits are fighting these outsiders. That our bandits <laughs> are fighting these outsiders. Hmm. Some of the villages are even gathering weapons and supplies to help our bandits. Because they at least let them live. But they're still losing. What do we know about the monster attacks? Well, the reports are controversial. They talk about things you wouldn't even hear in fairy tales. Educated wyverns, trolls wearing armor, even undetectable goblin ghosts. But all the testimonies agree on one thing. They emerge in small groups literally from nowhere. In the middle of a field, in the center of a city square, fortress parapets. One inn reported monsters rushing in the common hall from bedrooms and storerooms. 
And in a temple nearby, the monsters fell down on the heads of the praying congregation, breaking to the roof with a wild roar. Oh wow, it's raining monsters. Just a few hours ago, a messenger showed up at the castle with a missive offering the services of a group of rangers who specialize in investigating mysterious cases similar to these for a small fee. They're ready to facilitate establishing the nature of these inexplicable events. I suppose we should take them up on it. I have no idea how else we'd go about finding the source of these attacks. Well, if I was Uravetti, I would first um, make sure that there is a lot of chaos and then I would send those rangers to help counter the chaos and get paid and then that money pays for more chaos, right? Maybe that's for when I play an evil character, I don't know. Do we know who's spreading the propaganda? Uh, yes and no, the bards handing out pamphlets and singing slander about you have been seen in city streets, but none have been caught. Obviously some place in Patex is training these people and printing up their pamphlets and judging by the style and quality of the text, someone from Patex's Academy of Grand Arts was tasked with this mudslinging. I'd recognize their style of first from a mile away. If I were you, that's where I start looking for agitators. Enough talk then, there's no time to waste. Hurry, Grand Blackforge, your performance at the Rushlight Tournament, well frankly, you'd have been better off not going at all. People are laughing at you, you've completely lost their trust. The seeds of Aravetti's propaganda will be falling on fertile soil. I don't want to be a downer. <laughs> uh, yeah. But the fate of the kingdom really is in your hands here, Grand Blackforge. I'm afraid to think what might happen if we don't get control of the situation in the next few months. Well, there goes the planning of another episode. Here is a dragon with the, the Preacher's Warhammer. That's very nice, thank you. War of the River Kings. There we go. Find a way to deal with the bandits and discover why monsters are attacking the kingdom. Uh, let's see if these are by any chance... Um, events. Monsters sent by Iraveti are attacking your kingdom, appear appearing literally from out of nowhere. This threat must have some source and a group of rangers has offered their services in finding it. Well, Jetal or Octavia? Actually, it would be nice to rank up. Well, it would be nice to rank up both of them, but how about I send Octavia on this one? There is no um, percentage of success anyway, so let's start this one. Uh, oh, that was also... that could have been done by Octavia as well. Yeah, well, it's gonna have to wait. There are no other events. Let me quickly check the journal. It does not have a uh, timestamp at the very least. So... I'm thinking of ranking up... Um, Jetal. So we have no region quests, kingdom defense. What is this one? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think I will just rank up. Jetal. Where is our minister? Here we go. So the guards talked to the refugees and reassured them that the authorities would protect everyone in the region, whereas elsewhere they would be defenseless. The people weighed their options and decided to remain where it was safe. 
they now appreciate their royal protection even more. Community plus 2 and stability plus 5. Nicely done, Ikundayo. The villains have been dealt with, the guards tracked them down and arrested them during a night raid. Economy plus 3. Alright. Uh, the storyteller encouraged the citizens of the region not to limit everyone's freedom just because some were unable to exercise it responsibly. The brothel's advisories backed down and the differing sides have reconciled. Culture plus 3. Uh, let's see what we can do with this uh, new region. Training in the harsh hills of Glenabin could provide your troops with survival skills and endurance. This region's uh, military stability and espionage scores increased by two for each other region with military upgrades. That sounds pretty good to me. That is another seven days though. Um, maybe, well, I want to uh, take a look at the other events first anyway. So still life with a lemon peel drawn by a local artist was celebrated by the connoisseurs and art lovers. Such a masterpiece cannot go to waste. That is an opportunity, let's check the problems first. Pataxian presence. The whole region is being overwhelmed by monsters that appear from thin air. Something must be done to counter the magic behind this invasion. We are gonna let Rigongar deal with that one. Pataxian bards are spreading lies about the stolen lands, instigating unrest against its government. The storyteller could take care of that one. Pataxian assassins. Several influential citizens have been killed in their own homes. It seems that Pataxian assassins do not limit their targets to those on the battlefield. Let's see. 0% chance with Chaital and 10% chance with Ekundayo. Great. Just 35%. Oh man. So, uh, let's see, the Songs of Patex, we're gonna have the Storyteller uh, take care of, 31%, hopefully that will be enough. The Masterpiece will have Jubilust take care, that is fine. 35, and if we put Jatal there, it's 25. I would have preferred, uh, preferred the plus 3 to espionage, um, but st stability might be good now as well. Plus 10 from the stat rank, which I'm guessing is 5 then, stability, yes, okay. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's try it. And then we'll have to deal with uh, the minister, who's gonna have... An urgent matter. You know what I just noticed? Like I have this quest going on where someone stole my throne and so I think what Grand Blackforge is doing is either sitting on a small stool right now or he's squatting. As you can tell the uh, big throne is missing and he's still sitting somehow. Okay, Gralton found out that we were involved in their spies' deaths. They only had themselves to blame, but they've twisted their anger towards us, grabbed our people and thrown them in jail. They're looking to torture valuable information out of them, as if we would sit by and watch them succeed. These captives must die before they meet the executioner. They were valuable ones, but now they're a dangerous liability. Of course, if you felt you had an obligation to these people, you could attempt to release them by force, but I dislike that option. Gralton might accept a ransom, but would be showing weakness. Oh boy, we won't abandon our people. 
That that is that has been like my stance from the beginning of the game actually. So you must plot that escape. That's risky but bold. In any case, uh, it will send a message that there is no use putting pressure on us. Relations minus two, espionage plus four. Okay, well, that is good. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run outside for a moment. And uh, visit the tavern and look for the captain of the guard. So, Elena, what do you know about my throne gone missing? I heard there's been a number of thefts in town. Do you know anything about it? Of course I've heard about it, your highness. Many houses have been robbed and... Here's what's strange, no picked locks, no broken windows. How do these scoundrels get inside, huh? Those thieves are real masters of getting into other people's houses and they steal whatever they find. At one house they stole silverware, at another one they left the money but took the children's toys. Strange thieves. Elena, I need to find a rare book. Do you know where in the city I should look? Uh, you've probably asked the vendors, haven't you? If not, then do that. If you have... Um, oh, I, I know we should ask. Talk to Verdell, the blacksmith. He's quite a reader. Can't live a day without a book. What's new around here? Oh, I was right when I said that Patex is full of shameless foxes dressed like people. Lately, there's so many folks from Patex, more than mosquitoes in the spring. They're sticking their noses in everywhere. What is this lying on the ground? Oh, is that one of the pamphlets? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. A discourse by Trebescent of Cordelon on trueborn versus self-proclaimed rulers or the Pataxian lion and the flea of the hold of Blackforge. Shall I compare them to a lion and a flea? The former is strong, noble and wise, his temper calm and his manner unhurried, for he is aware of his own grandeur. But one shouldn't stand in his way, his mere roar instills awe and one blows off a clawed paw. Uh, and one blow of a clawed paw can smite anyone. Nature itself placed a crown upon his bro. brow. Wow, wow. Urging other nations to surrender. The other brings to mind a bug who can't see beyond its nose, a flea king, having spent some time at the court of a monkey ruling in Restov, rubbed against her skin and tasted her blood. He imagines himself worthy of a crown because his belly is full of debt which flows in the veins of kings. And the monkey, who herself rules due to a misunderstanding, granted him a title upon pointing him owner of a patch of uninhabited wasteland. I see. Will I get a... <laughs> Will I get a bonus if I uh, collect them all? Is it different ones? Uh, no, it's all the same. Okay. Where is the captain of the guard? That is my question. Is Highland the captain of the guard? Yes, he is. A young dwarf girl salutes you awkwardly. Dilia, assistant to the captain. Happy to serve your highness. Lindsay said it was you who discovered that the throne was missing. Uh, yes, your highness. Actually, your highness, please... Don't think of me a fool or a drunkard. As I walked to the throne room, at first I thought it was a vision and I didn't think much of it. Well, I thought I saw your throne in the corridor and it was running away. Not by itself, of course. I just couldn't see who was carrying it. Perhaps someone really tiny had got underneath it and... Um, how they and ran? Um, it seemed the throne turned the corner by itself, but the sight was strange beyond belief, so I thought I was simply too tired and had started seeing things. A moment later, when I discovered it was really missing, I rushed after it, but it had vanished into thin air. Maybe it was, uh, you know, magic? Island, the guards have everything they need. 
There are sufficient munitions and supplies, your highness. The salary is fair. We have enough to buy toys for the kids and a jug of beer when the shift is done. Of course, the town is growing. It would be nice to expand the ranks. But we can manage that ourselves. I'd like to learn something about those who serve me. Of course, your highness. I've been a guard all my life. I started a snot-nosed runt in the night watch. Restov is famous for its fencing schools. Uh, young people from all the river kingdoms come to study there. It seems every other person has a sword, and every third thinks they know how to use it better than all the rest. A misspoken word or a drunken fight can quickly lead to a stabbing rampage. That's why there are so many guards in the city. They don't accept just anyone. Lady Jamandi took note of my achievements and marked me for advancement. That's why I'm here. As for Delia, I found her on the street about a decade ago. I remember vividly a tiny dwarf girl sitting on the temple steps, dirty face, barefoot, feeding a piece of bread to a stray cat. Do cats eat bread? So dogs I could see eating bread, but the cat? Really? I saw her and my heart missed the beat. Where she's from, who left her alone and why, only a rascal knows. As she grew, I tried to send her to learn a craft, but who can talk sense into a dwarf? <laughs> say what now? <laughs> you say that to a dwarf, Highland? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> she wanted to be a guard and that's that, so now I'm teaching her myself. Lucky she has a head on her shoulders and a fair bit of strength. I don't remember hiring a guard. Or any guards, a uh, guard captain, or any guards for that matter. I came here from Restov with a dozen of my best guards by order of Lady Jamandi Eldori, Your Highness. I hired the rest from among the locals. Don't you worry, Your Highness. We are now the subjects of the kingdom. We've sworn to, to serve you faithfully and loyally, and you can count on us. Besides, we draw our salary from your chests. I have only one chest, and it's broad. Uh, of course, uh, every one of us is ready to die to protecting your highness, but there's still some work to be done when it comes to discipline. You know that dwarven otter, uh, Baldric Zebras, Garlic Tundras? The, the name escapes me. My boneheads used to read his books about guards' duty right on guard duty. I'll have to teach him a lesson or two. Um, okay. Wait until the throne appears for sale. Really? Okay, I've taken a quick look around the map and what I want to do is uh, I've taken out Regongar. We're gonna teleport since that gave us a funny feeling in the stomach. And then we are gonna head towards... Uh, where, where did it go? Oh, it's over here, okay. Uh, the Sharp Fang Tribal Camp. So that's where we're gonna head to. Well, there is a barbarian that flies around, so I'm guessing <laughs> this uh, camp was destroyed somehow. Of course, we need to look into a box first. That is not far. Who is this? Inked son of Shatara. In the dry grass you can barely make out signs that people once lived here. Burned bits of tents, rusty swords, rain-washed bones. An old half-orc is the only living soul among the desolation. Wrapped in a charred mantle he sits on the ground devouring a raw rabbit and tossing the bones to a dog lying at his feet. He squints as you approach, but he doesn't reach for any weapons. Hmm, who's there? No one comes by here anymore. I'm Rigongar, a son of the Sharp Fangs tribe, and they sold me into slavery. Where are the Sharp Fangs? You're looking at them. All their elders to children. Just me left of the sharp fangs. Well, me and you. Oh, Arya. Inget, son of Shatara, and the last of the sharp fang tribe. 
Got nowhere to go when my hands been feeble a long time. I sit here and eat whatever coal brings me, waiting for some kind person to pass by and help an old man bury all these bones. But no one comes here. Must think it's a cursed place. They're right. Tell me about your tribe. Our tribe was always stronger, braver and more valiant than the other tribes. Know why? We had a tradition. Mixing our blood with orc blood. Orc power with human prowess. We took the best of both races. No room for weaklings in the tribe. Weak children were either left in the field or sold to someone from the city. You say you were sold? Must have been sickly. What good would that do the tribe? Don't blame us for your own weakness. Ooh. Disgusting. Every time I learn something new about the habits of savages, I deeply regret it. What happened to the shot up fangs? Dead. All dead. Chieftain's son destroyed them. See, Chieftain Agden, may he feast eternally with Gorum, he didn't want anyone else's kid to become Chieftain after him. So he needed an heir with incredible power. That's why he chose Gra the Dragonite to bear his children. She was a mighty orc warrior who scorched her enemies with lightning. Boasted of having dragons in her family, she demanded a lot of gold for it, but she delivered more than she promised. She had not one child, but twins. Agdan thought a while on what to do, then wisely decided that a tribe doesn't need two chieftains. Sold the weaker one to someone from the city to get back some of the gold he spent, started raising the second one, Stragar, to be our new chieftain. The boy was alright, deft, cunning, strong, and he knew how to use dragon charms, could strike an elk with lightning from his hands. When he was knee high. There must have been too much orc and dragon blood in him and too little human. The older we got, the more, well, you know. Had a temper like a dragon. Something went wrong and started fighting right off. Couldn't tell his tribes folk from strangers and would shoot lightning at the tiniest provocation. Was always cocky with his father too. Called him names, screaming about how the chieftain sold his brother saying he'd look for him and return him to the tribe, in a word, crazy. Anyone else would have been happy that the chieftain's mantle, the one I wear now, um, anyone else would be happy to be getting the mantle, especially with no rivals for it, but he was stubborn, wanted his brother back no matter what, and one time Magden grew tired of Strugger's whims, decided to teach him a lesson, as a father does, knocked him a couple of times with a long rod, and that was it. Boy screamed like the hells and his eyes flared blue, started shooting lightning all around, it was terrifying, I still see it in my sleep. Flame, smoke, lightning everywhere, tents burning one after another. I was too old to fight, so I hid behind the hillock to stay out of the way. Some of the others, they wounded him with swords and they all died. No one survived, even the little ones were burned alive. He took as good as he gave though, died of his wounds soon after. That was the end of the sharp fangs. Ragongar looks at the bones scattered in the grass baffled. Brother. I'm sorry, discovering something like this is hard. Get lost, I don't need your pity. What do you say, Ragongar? Well, what is there to say? The half fork looks across the bones scattered in the grass. Lend me a hand here, let's give these jerks a proper burial at least. Where are you going? Lad, you're Strugger's brother? The Chieftain's second son? This is yours then. The old man drops the charred mantle from his shoulders holding it out to Ragongar. Tribe might be gone, but the chieftain's mantle is yours by right. After a moment of hesitation, Rigongar accepts the mantle. Thanks, old man. May the gods grant their souls peace. Let's go, nothing left to do here. There is, Rigongar. Um, there is a looting to do. 
Where are you going? Don't run off. Well, if he doesn't want to loot the place, as it should be, then uh, I will. There you see, 281 gold. It's a couple of build points right there for the taking. Maybe we can upgrade uh, the capital with something. Where are you, Ragongar? Let's have a conversation. Ragongar looks at the city below dazed. Well, it's over. No accusations, no spitting in their faces, no big fight. Just a pile of scorched bones and some stupid story from an old fart. I'm not here to pry, or to judge. I'm just glad I could help ya. Thanks, and you know what? You can pry into my soul as much as you want. You've earned it. Full permission. Not exactly a nice place in there, but... Not like we're strangers, right? It's a shame I couldn't meet my brother. Of course, he's in Farazma's hands now, just like the rest of them. Buried and, well, no, not forgotten. I'll remember this, just left behind. I don't waste time looking for lessons and everything like Lindsay does. But if any conclusion can be drawn from this story, it's this. Let's not screw our lives like these pieces of shit did. You're my tribe. You... Davia, the rest of our crazy gang, I don't need anyone else. Let's quickly check if there is something that we can still do here. Animals are flying into inexplicable rages. Wild beasts emerge from the woods to attack people. Livestock try to kick their owners and even loyal dogs bite the hands that feed them. Someone must find the cause of these strange events and put a stop to them. Yes, Christian, why don't you do that? There we go. What else do we have here? A ruler without a throne is but a fool. The thief must be found at any cost. The minister can track down the hideout of this infamous bandit. Uh, yes, minister. How about you do that? There we go. We can... Uh, Rank up the minister once more. Are we gonna go with the training grounds though? Well, everybody here is busy. Three days until Lindsay gets back and the rest is all gone for quite a while. So I'm assuming I don't have anyone to rank up even. Oh, we have the regent. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's do the regent then. That would bring community up to rank six. That's always good. Seven days. So let's see what happened to these uh, Pataxian uh, events. Region claims and upgrades cost 25% less. That's very nice, Lindsay. Uh, oh, okay. Um, yeah, that's gonna be a problem. 11 days. We don't have anyone here. <laughs> uh, that's an opportunity. Let's check the problems first. Jaytal brings disturbing news, okay. The uh, Songs of Patex. Yes, we don't have someone for that. Uh -huh. So Valerie could take part in this debate. The famous philosopher has paused in his travels to debate the wisest of our local advisors on the correct governments of a country. Victory in this dispute would be an honorable badge, while defeat would be resounding and disgraceful. And then hands of gold. Um, we could do that too. So 
difficulty 14 this is difficulty 35 so there is very little chance in succeeding here while over here we have 100% chance so let's uh, do hands of gold and then let's uh, check what our regent and Jaytal want Grand Blackforge were fighting crime in our lands and the bandits are running scared. In fact, many of them are ready to come clean and return to civilian life. They insist that it was starvation that led them down the slippery slope, but now that the kingdom is prospering, they want to return and do honest work. Their families are flooding us with petitions for pardon. Oh boy. I consider it inappropriate. You can't pardon highwaymen and murderers and let them live in peace among their victims. Every single one of them must answer for their crimes. They must be held accountable for their crimes. They will be shown no mercy. There you go. No mercy. Economy minus 5, stability plus 5. That is something. What is uh, Jaytal's news? I bring news, none, not unexpected. A sizable group of elves from Kionin has crossed the border into your kingdom. They send a message to you, you may read it if you wish, but I can state the substance in a few mur words. We demand you turn over the murderer, we await your response. To the king of this land, we need not be enemies. Give us the criminal murderer, guilty of the death of our children and friends, and we will leave your realm in peace. Be wise, ruler. Your lands have suffered greatly, and keeping treacherous monsters by your side cannot improve your kingdom's lot. We await your answer in the camp near the southwestern border of your kingdom. Travelers from Kionin seeking justice. Are they talking about Jaytal now? Jaytal stars, uh, stares at you closely as if trying to assess something. She's studying you, considering the larger situation. I uh, suppose we should meet with them. Back then, near the Torn River, after the battle with the elven youngsters, I felt Ergatoa's presence again. For the first time since I was reborn. Now I feel something similar, a command. Or the shadow of one. Besides, I don't like to leave my affairs unfinished. Let's put an end to this. Does this situation somehow threaten me or my kingdom? I doubt it. They're not official em uh, emissaries from Keonan. If they were, then their interference would look quite different. Most likely these are the families of those foolish youngsters from the camp near the Torn River. I assume they're inclined to fight, but they won't set ambushes or try to stab you in the back. First, they will surely try to negotiate. Elves, you know. Fine, we'll meet with these elves. Ready to strike out at a moment's notice. Bokken with a uh, new potion. Thank you, Bokken. Kimo. Uh, let's see. Can Kimo make something specific for me? How about... I don't know. Um... How about a quiver of arrows? Why not? Let's try it. Okay, that is going to conclude this episode. I want to thank you very much for watching while I... Is there... Oh, is there... There is actually a small stool behind him. You see that now? <laughs> okay. Well, he wasn't squatting after all. You know, Gran, if you want those firm buttocks, you need to squat, okay? Just putting it out there. Uh, with that nonsense out of the way, thank you very much for watching. I will see you in a next episode.